Oh, great. Do we have to deal with these right now? Yep, they're following you. Like drones, almost. Also, Vlad responded, because Vlad did get back to me. He oh. said, he said, he first he showed the emo, first he showed an emoji of someone gritting their mouth. <laughs> and, then he, and then he said, wait, 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 no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I can, I, th I think I can, uh, I think I've mastered the delivery here of how you probably say, it. <clears throat> I'm busy. Oh my god. <laughs> but he's busy with something? Yeah. yeah. Shit, shit, shit. Where's the missile coming from? I can't see it. The enemy, probably. Alright, there's another one coming in. I'm sorry, I can't get the image out of my head. Like, there needs to be an animatic someday of Golden flying in a plane or just flying out of a Ponyville or something. Galaxy and then Bliss something is just like in front that. of him. Oh, wait, like, wait, wait, wait. Go on. And then Bliss just shows up and then, like, casts a spell and you just hear the fucking the seismic charge sound effect from Attack of the Clones. Like, wah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that now. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was talking about before with the fucking whatever you just set off, like literally in front of your own face. And I was like, what the fuck? Okay, am I going to have to go above the clouds? No, wait, wait, wait. He's diving downward. All right. I haven't seen that galaxy drawing. She's made too many. I uh, It was a thumbnail for Pilot Wings. Oh, <laughs> okay. Also, with regards to that, to be like, a lot of. Sorry, go on. Like, now that we know what I'm talking about with the Attack of the Clones thing, now that Golden's remembered, like. Why didn't they use that more in Star Wars? Maybe it was just a thing that maybe Django only knew or something. I don't but know. I don't doubt that it was probably some kind of like illegal weapon system that only bounty hunters really use, but like that would be really fucking useful. That thing made mince meat of asteroid fields. Oh, uh, LeCougar. Like, sorry for the interruption. LeCougar, I know that I can fly above the clouds, but when you do that, it comes with a caveat it messes with their gauges. Yeah, I mean it is supposed to be a re a realistic flying game, so in yeah. some ways, like if you hit your plane, like realistically, you just blow up and die instantly. Yeah. Yeah. No. If that is like again, if that fucking big boom that happened three feet in front of you went off, we wouldn't be having this conversation right yeah, now. Yeah. Really. <laughs> yeah, we'd be dead. We would literally be incinerated and dead. It's oh. like I'd be I'd be reading out a eulogy to a wreckage <laughs> of a plane. Alright, here is here lies Gold Blaze Phoenix. He is survived by Keyframe. Here lies Grey Matter. He's oh, survived by Nice. Bronze a Ace. Bowl. No no fucking is like I could is like the eulogy would just be is like here lies the charred remains of Gold Blaze Phoenix. That was one that was a hell of a way to end three years of friendship. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> also, or is it uh, four years at this point? Hmm. Also, Logic, to answer your question why they didn't use the weapon, because that would have made the movies easier. It's the same kind of thing as to why, like, why didn't uh, Django use that dart that drains your life away after he hired that one bounty hunter? There you go. It'd make the plot more easier. They had to get rid of a, I mean, a plot point that would have ended up, well, kind of screwing over the story. Well, I mean, you also got to remember that, like, everything that happens between the beginning of Phantom Menace and the end of Revenge of the Sith is basically exactly as Palpatine needed it to. So, like, if Django, uh, like, here. remember, Anakin was there when the bounty hunter got poisoned. So if Django had shot Anakin, Sidious would have fucking erased him from reality itself. Him and his son and his clones and Kamino. <laughs> Again, it would have just broken the plot. It's It kind of reminds me a bit with Supernatural, with the whole, hey, we have literal God in the show, but oh shit, if we have God, that means he could literally b break the plot, and they just sort of de they just sort of didn't have him around for a lot of episodes. I think was... I remember that's what, apparently that's why Majin Buu wasn't allowed in the Tournament of Power, where I'm just like, that's, like, you do realize that Jiren is, according to the narrative, canonically stronger than most gods of destruction. I think you can have Majin Buu in the tournament. If Jiren is stronger than someone who can erase Buu. <laughs> Thinking too hard, logic. 
He's logic. What else were you expecting? <laughs> And it's just like, although I will say, having Frieza in the Tournament of Power made for a much better finale than I imagined having Ooh. Boo in there would have. Ooh. Because, like, in, like, they did Frieza so dirty in Resurrection F, but then when they brought him back, they, they fucking, did, they did that shit justice. Eat shit! Aw, oh, damn it. I thought it was gonna kill him. Like, I don't think anyone will ever contend that Resurrection F wasn't the worst thing that had ever happened to Frieza. But when they brought him back in Super, and it was like, ha, this is true golden Frieza. It's like, ah, yes, yes it is. And again, the coolest finale with oh, Goku shit. and Frieza versus Jiren. Well, I've never, I didn't watch Dragon Ball Super. I heard mixed opinions about it, but I heard it's still a fun anime. Oh no, the whole thing is mixed. Okay, like, long story short, the whole thing is mixed. Resurrection F and the arc associated with it are awful, and the finale is fire. There we the go. tournament of power was a bit drawn out with a bit too much going on to happen in one place because that's how tournaments work in anime. They always kind of leave a bad taste in your mouth because of how long you stay in one place. But Goku and Frieza versus Jiren at the end was one of my favorite moments. Because, you know, holy shit. <laughs> It's. I'm trying to. Remember. It's sort of similar with me. I mean, it's not like like Dragon Ball Z, but it's sort of similar with me and the season, the series finale of the the show Dark on Netflix. A little bit drawn out. There was a lot of uh, padding, especially with trying to answer a lot of unanswered questions. <laughs> and it was also very depressing, more than I ever expected. Not as depressing as Requiem for a Dream, but still depressing. Oh God, Requiem for a Dream made me so uncomfortable. Like, it, the movie's good, but I never wanted to watch it again. Same. I'm, that movie, along with Million Dollar Baby, hell no. Never watching those. Just, no. But What's anyway. going on? What? Uh-oh, there's a missile. You, you still have them behind you. I'm, but anyway. Oh, cutscene. Ooh. Go ahead. Ooh. Okay, good. Anyway, uh, logic, as I was trying to say. Depressing, bleak, kind of feels... Kind of, you end up feeling a little bit drained because everything is, um, everything's being thrown at you repeatedly, repeatedly. But the final episode, oh! Hey, I'm sorry. Are those more fucking drones? Yes. yes. That's you. That's okay. That looks Good fucking video. cool. But what? We're bringing freedom and destruction. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> Fighting the Taliban. That's you know something's is. wrong with your society if a question like what's the difference between freedom and destruction? It's like your society is very flawed if you cannot tell. I don't know <laughs> why I wasted two missiles on that shit. Why I was about, you waste I was two missiles? To make, I was tempted to make a certain comment, but I really don't because of current situations. Yeah, let's not Fuck. get into that. Yeah, I'd rather not, thank you very much. Let's watch Golden yeah. destroy fictional drones in a fictional universe when a lot of real-life events didn't actually happen. Yeah, escape from born reality and just, you know, watch some cool shit get blown up. Like, reality is simultaneously boring, but also exciting in all the ways you don't want it to be. Yes. Oh, God. Okay, I'm, I'm a sitting duck here, Jesus. Right. Also, I understand it's because video game, but once you've destroyed like three the of the spinny turbine? thingies, the, the on jet these, turbines. Yeah, once you've destroyed three jet turbines, this thing should not function. <laughs> it's but no, once you've destroyed one half of them, including the big one on the left side, this thing should be drooping on the left side. Significantly. In general, to be honest, be droopy. Shut up. Shut up, Riley. But anyway, no, like, if you've I seen I appreciate those, the reference, but shh. Like, if you've seen those videos of, like, turbines on planes breaking down, the, the the minute it starts to already malfunction, they already have to have to immediately get down somewhere safe. So mm. that plane should have been falling down the air already, even if it is a military plane. But, you know, video game. Yeah. Like, this thing is currently surviving on one turbine. 
Oh Jet wait. At this point. <laughs> wait, maybe they could argue that like there's actually a jet thing somewhere oh, and these turbines are just stabilizers. Oh, but, like... Is that a laser? Yeah. Yes. What? Fucking what? If generated a force mm -hmm. field, son of a bitch. All right. Bro. I ex you... What? I shouldn't be surprised if this is so, from okay, it takes so its much own realism. Yeah, no shit. It always takes artistic liberties. I gotta wait until the shield is down before I fly into it. When does the shield go down? Uh, I have no idea. Just as soon as it is, there's like, what? One, two, three, four targets left. Oh, shit! Oh, I was breaking too long. Also, all of the turbines are broken. And yet it's still floating. That's, like... So there's gotta be, like... At like actual thrusters somewhere keeping it up. Oh, oh, oh the hello. There's some other the enemies I gotta take care of. Yeah, it's like uh, maybe the propellers were just the speed. No, 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 no. Actually, this is closer. No, which one's closer? There. Yes. Closer to God. Also, on the topic of force fields, can I bring up something that I thought was very clever from the uh, Clone Wars series? What's that? So, like, you guys know the destroyer droids or the droid deckers, the guys with the shields. I wouldn't know. I'm not a Star Wars fan, but go on. Okay, basically, they're that droids that have force fields and they roll around. But okay. the um oh like, just, yeah yeah I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I yeah I always wondered why like I always wondered how force fields like that work in any sci-fi because like if the force field is like embedded in the ground how do you move but star is like in the clone wars during what's basically a guerrilla warfare arc the um it's revealed that the re the way the shields work is that the shields are designed so that anything moving faster than a certain speed gets stopped by them and that speed just so happens to be, like, the speed at which droidicas move when they're not rolling. So a droidica can walk around with its force field up. However, if you roll a grenade through the force field at the same speed, you can also circumvent the shield. Huh. So that's why you see people... That's why you see in earlier episodes you can kind of just, like, move a lightsaber into position and ignite it inside the ah. force field it's because you're not moving as fast as you would need to for the shield to stop you and i think that was really clever all right he's gone because it does make a lot of sense it's like you know it's got to have some kind of give for you to be able to move with it <sighs> but that does make you wonder why don't they use stronger force fields for like static emplacements like turrets Lock on. There we go. Get smoked, motherfuckers. <sighs> All right, come on. No, 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 no. All right, there we go. What's up, there? Perfect. Yeah, logic. What is up, my dude? Thing. Huh? I said nothing. <laughs> I heard you sighing. No, I said nothing as in I'm fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Lock on, lock on, lock on, lock on, lock on. Come on, come on. There. So in case it was unclear, I don't believe you. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine, honest. I think I just need water. I am tired after. Water. Once the bringer of life. I've been awake since 4 a.m. because I went in at oh, 5. Oh, I still so. got it. Oh, God. Out of the clouds. Out of the clouds. Out of the clouds. All right. I've been awake since 4 a.m., so that's fun. I see. I go in tomorrow at 6. <clears throat>
Is it down? All right, so mission's over. All right. <clears throat> okay, good. It's dead. No, it's not. Damn it! <laughs> what is dead? Hey, Golden. Yes. With your PC's new capabilities, do you think you would be able to stream Hollow Knight at some point? Yes. Because that sounds very cool, and I know you are. I know you enjoyed Metroid, so you're a Metroidvania kind of guy. Well, I, I, I absolutely, yeah. Oh, very I'm cool. Time. All right. I don't know if you've played it yet, but would you be able to play um, Limbo? What's Limbo? Um, Limbo uh, is one of those like Limbo is one of those ambiguous like walking right. I don't want to say walking simulator, but it's one of those games where it's like, it's in, it's an implicit sort of like, you have to interpret the story a certain way. Everything's black and white. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of themes that perhaps you're dead and this is the afterlife or something, hence Limbo. And like, I don't know how to properly explain the game, but it's literally just you walk right and solve puzzles. Hmm. Okay. In a very um, stylized world. Yeah, it's there are similar games to it, like Inside, and these two games that actually put a unique spin on it. There's Far Lone Sales and Far Something Tides, I think, which involve traveling right constantly while also keeping a vehicle fueled. So there's a lot of games like that. I like I wouldn't play them because like it's just not for me. But I'm not gonna say they're bad. They look pretty cool. Um, another game that I could recommend is, um, Delirium. Because I know Solar mentioned he, that he played it. Here it comes. Hmm. It's sort of, it, it's basically MLP with Silent Hill, with, with a Silent Hill aesthetic, but not really, because is that an obviously... SU model? Hey, what? Yeah, it is, it's an SU model. <clears throat> oh, ooh. Also, you can tell this is anime-inspired, because that science is kind of just standing out there. He looks like your typical evil scientist sort of stereotype from modern anime. Oh. Or a Pokemon professor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is a fantasy world that these planes, they call it, I think it's called Strange World? Right. Well, I mean, the force field kind of led me to believe it was a sci-fi fantasy kind of deal. Um. It, does kinda, it, it just could be me because I'm still into I'm still interested in that game. It kind of gives me a Death Stranding vibe, without the walking. The most the point. <laughs> I mean, it has more. It would it would have more Guillermo del Toro. I mean, Guillermo del Toro. Um, oh. Kojima's weirdness. Mm.